Hey everybody, my name's Devin. Some of you may know me as the OG, the original Grognard, and I'd like to welcome you to a new series of videos we're doing here at Lock and Load called World at War 85 Tactics Training. We are hoping that this new series of videos done by myself and others will pass on advice, tips, tricks, techniques, and tactics to enhance your World at War 85 gaming experience. Most of these videos are going to run approximately 5 to 10 minutes in length, but this one's probably going to run a little bit longer because we are going to be going over the differences between the original World at War and the new 2nd edition World at War 85. So, why don't we get into it, hop on over to the table, and see what we're talking about. Let's take a look at the counters, shall we? We have the old counters on the left and the newer counters on the right. As you can tell and see, the newer counters are much bigger. I mean, that's we can just stick it on there. And we can tell they're just, you know, a good, I don't know, 33% bigger? Well, maybe not 33% bigger, but much bigger. Uh, the new counters have been redesigned with the attack numbers along the top of the counter, whereas defense movement and close assault numbers are along the bottom, whereas the old counters had the armor piercing in the upper left and high explosive ratings in the lower left, along with the movement and close assault factors along the bottom. Uh, old augmented uh, firepower, you may remember those were the plus signs. They've been just rolled into the new values, uh, typically less firepower, but uh, better to hit. Uh, infinity symbols on the artillery pieces have been removed, replaced by an actual calculated range. Uh, some of the maps are actually going to be big enough where <laughs> you actually do have to take into consideration the actual uh, distances that the artillery is shooting. Uh, we have no more underlying markers for enhanced fire and movement. Uh, that's been completely removed, uh, whereas uh, units with enhanced fire and movement in the new edition will have the orange firepower numbers in their armor piercing and high explosive. I know for me, I was always trying to remember, okay, this number's underlined, what does it mean? Because you'd have the firepower underlined, you'd have the, the hit underlined, it, you know, you'd forget what the underlines are. Most of the old nomenclature of the plus signs, the infinity signs, the, the underlined signs have been wrapped into new numbers and have been color-coded for your convenience. It's much easier to, uh, to figure those out. Uh, we've completely redesigned the range, firepower, armor, movement, and assault values for all units in the game. Uh, and one thing that I think is kind of cool, the uh, support weapons uh, are now, well, as you can tell, I'll take a look at the difference between the dragon, the old dragon, and the new dragon. I mean, let's see, that was a 234, now it's a 434. So, you know, as we said, ranges have been completely redesignated. With the old ones, the old support weapons, you flip it over and it would have a different unit on the back. The new edition, you flip it over as the same unit on the back. So it's easier to find counters now because they're on the same side. The, any one counter is the same on both sides. Uh, this is also the same with close air support markers, which we didn't have in the original, uh, at least not that I remember. The counter is the same on both sides, again, just making it a lot easier to find. Most other normal units will have the reduced step on the other side, and there will be some units that are just one-step units, which will just have the, the phrase one step on the reduced side to let you know that it takes one hit, it's destroyed. Another thing you may notice is that formation names, we used to have the formation name for Yankee, Delta, Bravo, whatever, used to be on the counters, has been completely removed in favor of a color-coded bar system to identify formations now. Uh, this uh, allows for greater variety and for attachments. Uh, one sim simple formation card with the same color can rename a formation, can also change its morale and command ranges. Uh, I think that's a, that's a little bit better because now you can have one formation fulfilling multiple roles from a historical scenario perspective. You know, quote, historical scenario in, in a third world war scenario, I know. Um, but before... Team Yankee formation was a Team Yankee formation. If you wanted to use another formation that had the exact same units, you would have to print out counters and another formation shit and everything to fulfill the role of that the new formation. Now, uh, okay, it's an Abrams company. Abrams company is an Abrams company is an Abrams company. If you need an Abrams company, 
you can just utilize this one color rather than having to go back and print out multiple formations of the same name type. Uh, headquarters are now, they kind of work like attachments now. Before they were an actual unit that you put on the field. It was real easy to hunt them and shoot them specifically. Now they are an attachment uh, that... Uh, they're hard, well, it makes it harder to hunt and less of a loss when they are hit. Uh, they're always returned to, to the board if, if whatever unit they're attached to, if they end up taking casualties or not getting knocked out from it, they will return in later turns, So unless the entire, entire formation is destroyed. So it makes headquarters more valuable and harder to hunt and harder to completely eliminate than it did in the first edition. We also have leader counters, which can now be attached. They kind of work like headquarters units. Uh, they're not, uh, they can't move on their own, but they can be, uh, their attachments, they can be, they can cross attach. They can attach to different units throughout the entire turn. Uh, all direct fires use point blank. It used to be uh, only certain units to get point, point bank bonuses, bonuses, but all direct fire units, points blank range, or point bank Point blank bonus, half printed or less rounded down. Uh, effective, which is your printed range, and long range penalty, which is past printed to double printed. So basically, what that means is that every unit now gets point blank at half their fire, half their range or less. Effective range is out to their effective range, and all units can use extended range firepower, which is up to double whatever their their printed range value is. We have implemented easier to understand and follow missile reloading rules and have included reloading missile markers, low missile ammunition markers, which indicate a unit has one shot left, and no missile ammunition as compared to the original ammo depleted 1 and 2 counters from the first edition. Minimum ranges have also been implemented for some units, as you can tell the differences between the old SAGR, the new SAGR, the old BMP, and the new BMP. You will note that the 14 is underlined under the ranges on both units. We do not have those underlines anymore. We can tell that a unit has a minimum range by the black triangle on the missile firing unit. Missile firing units are indicated by a green firepower number. So that green three tells you it's a missile firing unit. Black triangle indicates it is a minimum fire minimum firing ranged unit. Reactive and composite armor are also reflected on the unit counter, counter and decreased missile effectiveness. That is indicated by the orange triangle on an armored unit. We have added rules for onboard indirect fire as an action. Offboard artillery strikes remain the same. Added classes of minimum range for onboard small mortars, medium to large mortars, and artillery and larger. Artillery now strikes each unit in a hex. Artillery capable of an indirect fire strike are indicated by the black triangles on the unit counter. Onboard artillery fire has now been codified. Artillery strikes may scatter up to two hexes or the fire may be checked. This includes onboard artillery fire. Non-headquarters units may spot for onboard indirect fire if they pass a spotter check. Units that do not have to pass a spotter check to call for artillery fire, onboard artillery fire, are headquarters units and reconnaissance units. Reconnaissance units can be identified by the red triangle on the unit counter. Both smoke and artillery delivered mines may deliver a variable pattern of up to three counters as long as each counter is, adj is adjacent to at least one other counter in the strike. And what I probably think is the coolest change from the first to the new edition is the addition of formation cards for formation deck instead of the old chip pull system. Uh, formation cards will now include morale level, command range when at full strength, command range when at half strength, scratch force cards, designated formation cards, formation cards for airstrikes, End operations has been changed from end of turn like it used to be with the old counters because there is now another phase after the operations phase is over. Battlefield event friction cards, electronic warfare cards, all in all just a super, super change over the 
tiny, tiny formation markers we pulled in the first edition. The maps have been enlarged to accommodate the larger counters, but with no loss of playing area. Maps are approximately 13 and one quarter by 19 and one quarter and are all geomorphic. So you can see this is the death of the first Panzer map. I can compare it to the newer map three. We even have a little bit of expanded playing area. And with all the maps being geomorphic, with all games in the series, you can have a map from Storm in the Gap and we'll be able to play it with a game from any of the other system for design your own for design your own scenarios. Also, we have a bunch of new player aids to assist. Turn record track, weather track, NATO and offboard artillery tracks, which are great. Seeing as how I had made up my own artillery cards in the original edition. I had to keep these off to the side. Now we've got tracks to track all of them cohesively. A formation deck, discard deck, and another player aid for headquarters, special weapons, suppressed HQs, and casualty box. There's also a massive amount of rules changes, modifications, improvements, and basic general quality of life enhancements in the rule set from the first edition to the second edition. Now, I could sit here and read all those to you, but it'd probably be kind of boring for both of us. So why don't you go ahead and head on over to the Lock and Load Publishing website, go to the Board Game Resources tab, and look under the World at War 85 resources, and you'll find the PDF with all the rules listings, plus everything I've included in this video located there. I think that'll do it for our inaugural episode of World at War 85 Tactics Training. Hope to see everybody out on the battlefield real soon.